This morning, I want to share a message with you. I believe it is for every one of us, but I also believe it is a message that we need to take with us that we have something to tell the world. John 14 and 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus tells us very plainly that he is the way. He says, the only way, nobody comes to the Father except through Him. All other religions are about man's way, man's way to God, man's way out of his problems, man's way to peace and joy and fulfillment, man's way to heaven. But Jesus says that He is the only way. He is the only way that we can have a real relationship with the one true God with our Heavenly Father. He says, nobody comes to the Father except through me. He is the way to eternal life. He's the way into heaven. Jesus didn't say, now, be good, do the best you can to be good to get into heaven. No, Jesus said, there's none but God who is good. Listen, I'm going to throw a lot of scripture at you this morning, but I want to tell you, we need that sometimes to tear down some of the philosophies of this world that just tend to creep into the church. We need to know the truth. Amen. And here's the truth this morning. Jesus says that he's the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father except through him. Jesus didn't say, hey, everybody, just find your own way into heaven. You know, the scripture tells us in Proverbs 16, 25, there's a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Jesus didn't say, well, just go with your heart. You know, that's a real popular thing in our culture now. You know, you just trust your heart. You just go with your heart. But the scripture says in John, uh, Jeremiah 17 and 9, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it. No, you don't, just, you don't just trust your heart. You don't just go with your heart. You go with Jesus. He's the only way. Jesus didn't say, look inside yourself for the way. He didn't say, the way is whatever you want it to be. He didn't say, there are many ways. He said, I am the way. Amen. Not a way. No one comes to the Father but through me. See, there's this philosophy today that God is whoever you want him to be. That right is whatever is right for you. And the way to heaven is whatever you choose to believe. But apart from Jesus, you just can't get there. There is no other way. People say all religions lead to God. They say we're all praying to the same God. Some use this analogy of going on a trip. You know, if you're going to go to Denver, Colorado, you can go straight up I-35 all the way to I-70, turn left on I-70 and take it straight on to Denver. You can go up through 287, up through the Texas Panhandle and the Oklahoma Panhandle and on over to 70 and into Denver. You can go straight over to New Mexico and go up I-25 into Denver. But I'm just telling you, one way or another, there's a lot of different ways to get to Denver, and any of them will work. I mean, the time might be different, the scenery might be different, the road conditions might be different, but hey, the only thing that matters is that we all end up in Denver. It doesn't matter how you got there. And that's an analogy that the world uses many times when they're talking about that all roads lead to heaven, they're all praying to the same God. But the analogy is so wrong. It might be true for a road trip, but it's not true for a spiritual journey. Because when it comes to a relationship with the one true God and going to heaven, there's only one road that you can take. Every other road is a dead end. Jesus is the way. And people say, well, that's narrow-minded. Even people who profess to be Christians will say, well, you know, we don't want to be narrow-minded about it. You know, the other people have their faith. They have their ways. But here's what Jesus says in Matthew 7, 13 and 14. He says, enter by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few 
who find it. I want to tell you this is another one of the unpopular teachings of Jesus. Not just unpopular with the world, but even with a lot of so-called Christians. Jesus says the way to life is narrow and there are few that find it. It is not this broad way, just any way, it don't matter, we're all going to the same place. No, Jesus says the broad way takes you to destruction. There's a narrow way that leads to life. So is it narrow-minded to say Jesus is the only way? Listen, it is truth. We're living in this time when truth is whatever, it's movable. But I'm telling you, anytime you err to either side of the truth, you're going to end up in a ditch. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. More and more people, as I said, even many that consider themselves Christians, believe there's many different roads to God. And I'm just telling you that, you see, the philosophies, the attitudes of the world, they start creeping in. If we don't stick with the Word of God, if we don't keep our mind renewed with the Word of God, the influences of the world so often start creeping into the church and people begin to waver in their faith and their conviction and what they know to be right and what they know to be so. So I believe this is really a message for the church first that we need to know this. Jesus is the only way. You know, a lot of people say, well, as long as you're sincere, long as you're sincere in what you believe, you'll get to heaven. The Jewish leaders thought they were doing the right thing when they crucified the Son of God because they considered Him to be a troublemaker, a blasphemer. They thought they were doing the right thing. When they flew airplanes into the World Trade Center towers. They were sincere. They were so sincere. They were willing to give their lives. They did. They gave their lives for what they believed. But I can tell you absolutely this morning, they didn't get those 70 virgins that were promised to them. It's a fantasy. It's not true. And so you can be sincere all you want. But if you miss this, you miss it all. Jesus is the way. Nobody comes to the Father except through Jesus. Our faith has to be based on the Scripture, on the Word of God, or it's just delusion and fantasy. Another deceptive analogy that people use a lot of the time is they say, well, we're all climbing the same mountain. You can climb this side or that side. You can climb up this path or that path, but we're all climbing up to the same God. This analogy is so very wrong. It speaks of all of the efforts of man that we are climbing up. This is exactly what all of the other major religions of the world teach, that you are striving and climbing and trying to be good. If you do this and you don't do that, eventually we're going to get to God. But it doesn't matter how hard you try. It doesn't matter how sincere you are. It doesn't matter what effort you put in and what you do. You can't get to God on man's effort. That is man-made religion. This is why Christianity is so different. A better analogy. It's not a mountain we're trying to climb to get to God. No, the right analogy is that there's a great chasm between us and God. And there's nothing that we can do. There's no way we can ever cross that chasm on our own. But it is through the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that by His grace... He is the way. He is the bridge across that chasm so we can have a relationship with God, so we can be with Him for all eternity. And that is totally different from all of the other major religions in this world. You just can't get there without God's help, without His grace. We are saved by grace through faith. All of the other religions contradict what Jesus said. They contradict 
what the Bible says, and it becomes clear that both cannot be right. Both cannot be true. One is right and one is wrong. C.S. Lewis said that Jesus is either Lord or he is a lunatic or a liar. He is either the Son of God. He is either the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father through him. Or he's a liar and a lunatic. I'm just telling you, you can't have it both ways. You can't say that what he said is not true and then say, but he was a great man or he was a prophet. No, there's only one way. And Jesus is that way. Nobody comes to the Father except through him. Buddhism teaches that the ultimate goal is nirvana where all pain and suffering exist no more. And the way to reach this nirvana is you follow the eightfold plan or path to enlightenment and then you reach this place of total nothingness and emptiness. You become nothing. In Hinduism, the ultimate goal is nirvana, but their nirvana is different. Instead of being snuffed out like a candle in total nothingness, nirvana for a Hindu is being re reunited with Brahm, the all-pervading force of the universe. And the way to achieve this union with Brahm, this nirvana, is through reincarnation. Depending on how you live and whether you're good or, or bad, you move up or down. So if you're really good, you might come back as a golden retriever. And if you're not so good, you might come back as a cockroach. But the way you achieve nirvana is you keep moving up another level and up another level until you finally achieve this oneness with Brahm, with the Force. Hello, Star Wars. Oh, Jesus made a way for us to have a relationship with our Heavenly Father yes. right now. He paved the way. He is the way. In Islam, heaven is a paradise. It's a paradise of all the pleasures that man desires, of wine and women and song. And evidently, there's a whole lot of virgins I don't think it's so great for the ladies, by the way. But you got to follow the five pillars of Islam and give up all the pleasures of life in order to achieve this paradise. And they have this long list of, of do's and an even longer list of don'ts. And you got to be careful to try to keep all of this. But that heaven, that reward, when it finally comes, it is all of the pleasures that you gave up in this life. All the pleasures that you desire. Even though they believe in Jehovah, Judaism denies that Jesus is the Messiah. They believe that it's only through the keeping of the law that they can obtain eternal life. And the irony is, is that they no longer keep the law. Apart from Jesus, the Messiah, there is no sacrifice anymore. They have no sacrifice for their sins. They don't keep the law at all. But if someone believes that all religions worship the same God, I can tell you this, they don't believe in the God of the Bible. And they don't believe the Scriptures. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. We need to know that. We need to, get to know it beyond any shadow of a, of a doubt because, listen, our salvation depends on it. If you think that there's another way, then you think that Jesus didn't have to die. And if you think that there's another way, Paul says you've fallen from grace. There is no other way. And we can't waver. We can't start thinking, well, you know, maybe there's other ways. Jesus didn't, you know, that, that's one way. But what? No, there's only one way. Jesus had to die. The Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world. That's the only way. 
And you've got to settle it forever in your heart, not only for your own self, but here's a, one of the big issues that's happening with the church in America today. We, people have been so influenced by this philosophy and these attitudes that they no longer have a passion to share the gospel. Satan has used this deception to quell our passion. Listen, we got to know that we know these people need Jesus they need to know what we know. There isn't another way. He's the only way. I, I want to say this clearly this morning. We cannot have the attitude of some who in anger criticize and attack others who don't believe what we believe. In fact, those people who have that spirit, that is the wrong spirit. And those people don't even share the gospel. They just attack and criticize. And I hope that nobody would take this message this morning to go point the finger at somebody and say, you're wrong, ours is the right way. That is not the message. Our message is that God loves them, that Jesus gave his life to save them. We need to communicate the gospel with the love of God because the goal is not to just tell them how it is. The goal is that we win them to Jesus. And that doesn't happen without us loving those people. You see, the heart, the motivation has to be because we love them and we care about them and they're going the wrong way. But you see, it starts with this. You got to know this is the only way. So many in anger, they're hateful and rude to people of other faiths and they bring reproach on the cause of Christ. Our mission is to win them, to make disciples. We want to help them because Jesus is the only way. Acts 4.12, there is no, there is salvation, nor is there salvation, I'll get it out, in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. No other way, no other name, it's just Jesus. And it's only by the grace of God provided to us by the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that any of us can be saved from the sinful human condition. All the other religions of the world... They're all based on the efforts of man trying to get to God. They all tell you that you got to do something. you got to earn your way to God. And I, I'm, gonna, I'm talking about this again because it, it's so important that we understand the difference in our faith and their faith. We understand why there's no other way to be saved. You see, they're all about being religious and doing good and trying to be good. In fact, I'll just tell you, you know what the, the main religion in America is? The number one thought for getting to heaven is? Even if it's called Christianity or some other faith or no name at all, nothing at all. Well, you got to be more good than bad. That's it. That's what most people believe, even most Christians. Well, I'm a good person. That doesn't get you to heaven. The only thing that gets you to heaven is salvation through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're saved by grace. That's it. But all these other religions, it's all about doing certain things. You know, you... Through, through a series of reincarnations, you're climbing higher each time, doing the right things. You got to take, you got to use this Tibetan prayer wheel. You got to dress a certain way. You got to stand in an airport and play a tambourine. You got to pay a certain amount. You got to make a pilgrimage to Mecca. You got to give alms to the poor. You got to follow the five pillars. You got to pray a certain way. You got to eat certain foods or not eat certain foods. You got to go door to door for two years. You got to strap a bomb on and go blow some people up. On and on and on it goes. But here's the difference. All those efforts of man trying to reach God, but it is through the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen. That God reached out to us. That's different. It's not like those other faiths. 
It is God who reached out to us through the Lord Jesus Christ, 2 Corinthians 5.18. All this is from God who reconciled us to Himself through Christ. Our God is the only one who came down in a human body and lived among us a sinless life so He could die for our sin and redeem us to God. John 1 and 1. I'm going to throw some scripture at you real quick here because I'll tell you every one of us needs to know these verses. John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Everybody say it. The Word was God. That's right. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. And then verse 14, he tells us, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. I tell you, Jesus, the Word, was there in the very beginning. And the Word was God. And the Word, John 1.14, became flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld His glory. The only begotten of the Father, the Son of God. Glory to God. I'm telling you that in Jesus... Our God came to earth to save us. To do what we couldn't do for ourselves. This only by His blood, that Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. All we do, we believe. John three sixteen. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him would not perish but have everlasting life. There's only one who paid for our sin. And there's only one who lived a sinless life. Did you know that all of the other leaders of the world's religions, well, you know this, right? I mean, they're all dead and got turned back to dust. Our Savior lives. But here's something else. Our Savior is the only one that lived a sinless life. None of them even claim to live a sinless life. Their followers knew better. But our Savior lived a sinless life so He could die in our place so that we could have His righteousness. He took our sins upon Him. 2 Corinthians 5.21 He made Him who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. See, there is no way that man can get to God. There's no way that man on his own effort of being good enough can ever be right with God to be righteous, to have a right standing with God, but it is only by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, not what we do, but what He has already done. Romans 3.10 says, there's none righteous, no, not one. You see, all of us have to come this way through Jesus. That's the only way. I hope you understand this morning that we're not just talking about the way to heaven. We're talking about the way to a real relationship with the one true God. We're talking about a way to truly be close to God. That we call Him Father and He hears us. Listen to this from Hebrews 10, 19-22. He says, therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, not any other way. He says, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain, that is his body. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. He says there's a new and living way. We can draw near to Him with full assurance of faith. Oh, how blessed we are to know this truth. That in Jesus, the way has been opened. Through the precious blood of Jesus, the way has been opened for us to draw near to Him. In James 4.8, he says, draw near to God and He'll draw near to you. What a promise, what a privilege, how amazing to be able to draw near to God because of that precious blood that redeemed us. He is the way. 
He is the way to a relationship with the Father. He is the way out. So many people are looking for a way out of their problems. Any way out. A way out of sadness, depression, a way out of stress. A way out of the weight, the press of life that's upon them. And sometimes in looking for a way out, they end up in some bondage or addiction. Some people do drugs, or alcohol. Some even take their own life looking for a way out. I will tell you this morning, Jesus is the way. He's the way out. He's the way out of all of that anxiety and the weight of life. He says, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden. He's the way out. He's the way out of depression. He says, I'll give you my joy that your joy might be full. He's the way out of all of that worry and anxiety. And he says, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives. I'm telling you, Jesus is the way out. He's the way out from underneath all of that condemnation and guilt. He took our sins away. He bore our guilt so that we could be the righteousness of God. He's the way out of an empty way of life. Jesus, the way, he gives us abundant life. He's the way through all of the battles, the struggles, the difficulties of life. So many storms come our way with health and finances and family, all kinds of things, but he makes a way for us. He's our way maker. You know, when the children of Israel passed through the Red Sea on dry ground, it was an amazing miracle that God parted the water. But I want you to know that our God is still in the miracle business. And if you're facing something that looks impossible, He is the God of the impossible. Jesus said, all things are possible to him who believes. In Isaiah 43 and 16, it says, Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea. He's still that God, I'm telling you. And as we have a relationship with Him, He makes a way for us to overcome whatever the battles, the struggles that we face. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the way to live. It's amazing when you read the book of Acts, five times believers are referred to the way. They lived such a way of life. They became, they became referred to as those of the way. One of the times it's mentioned is in Acts 22 and 4 when the Apostle Paul is talking about his former way of life. He says, I persecuted the followers of this way to their death, arresting both men and women and throwing them into prison. Because I want to tell you, following Jesus, it's a way of life. As we fix our eyes on Jesus and we follow after Him and we learn to live this life the way He wants us to, the world ought to see that there's something so different about our life. It's a different way. Yes. Not the same old life with a little Jesus stamped on it. But we've truly been changed. Jesus is the way to truly live, to follow after Him and serve Him. So many looking for answers, trying to do good, trying to do right. Jesus is the way. So many looking for answers to life. Jesus is the way. See, when life is too much, we're not strong enough, Jesus is the way. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. 
when we fail, when we fall, when we're just not enough. I'm telling you, Jesus is the way. If you want to know God personally, Jesus is the way. You want to be closer to God, Jesus is the way. You want to go to heaven someday, Jesus absolutely is the way. If you're looking for meaning and purpose in life, Jesus is the way. If you're needing guidance and direction, Jesus is the way. You need a miracle, Jesus is the way. You want to change your life, Jesus is the way. There's something you can't overcome, something you can't get free from, Jesus is the way. I'm just telling you, Whatever it is, you see, we want to be used of God more. It's Jesus. He's the way. When the doctors say, there's nothing else we can do, Jesus is the way. When your bank account says no way, Jesus is the way. I'm telling you, when you're trying to hold your family together, Jesus is the way. When the pressures of life are just too much, Jesus is the way. When you're backed into a corner, no way out, Jesus is the way. He says openly, plainly, boldly, truthfully, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I want you to stand with me. We're going to pray. I'd like to ask our prayer partners to come.